We first introduced this series two weeks ago, but in case you missed it, it's a perennial complaint that we in the media only bring you bad news and then more bad news. But with so many people making a difference in their communities, we try to balance the scales with our new feature called Greater Bostonians. Tonight, WGBH's Stephanie Lydon introduces to a jet-setting 20-something CEO whose mission isn't to make money, but to build a better wheelchair. Steve Panto has used a wheelchair for most of his adult life, but nothing like the one he's trying now. The way that it, it keeps its balance, you can go through terrain that you wouldn't normally be able to go through and not have to worry about tipping over or falling or, you know what I mean, getting stuck. As much mountain bike as it is wheelchair, it's ideal for navigating the icy remnants of winter at Fresh Pond in Cambridge. But it was designed for far more remote areas where pavement is scarce. Villages in East Africa, Vietnam, and India home to a young tailor named Ashok. He had a, an accident. He fell from a tree and sustained a spinal cord injury and was sent home from the hospital in a really standard wheelchair and just couldn't get around. Tish Skolnick has traveled the world meeting wheelchair users and trying to come up with a better way for them to get around. It's a quest that almost began by accident. She was considering a career in medicine when during her freshman year at MIT, something caught her eye. I see an ad on the wall for a class called Wheelchair Design for Developing Countries. To put the pin through. The class turned into a calling. Instead of medicine, she pursued mechanical engineering. She teamed up with two fellow students, Ben Judge and Mario Bellini. They soon determined standard wheelchair design would never work. They needed to start from scratch, so why not use materials available everywhere? We saw just how ubiquitous bikes were. People were riding bikes all the time. There were bike shops all over the streets. Um, and we realized just how standard those parts were. They began designing a wheelchair made from bike parts. And this is a regular 26-inch downhill mountain bike tire. It even has gears and a unique way to control them. Our chair uses this lever drivetrain that we designed. So it's, it's more ergonomic. It's more like a bench press. You push the levers forward to propel the chair. Hold the lever high to go up hills, hold it low, you gain speed. The freedom chair, as it's called, took years to get right. This prototype was too low to get in and out of. In another version, they tried using an office chair. Our next field trial in Guatemala in 2010. You're still a student at this point. Yeah, we're all still students at this point. Now graduated, Tish is the CEO of Cambridge-based GRIT. Ben and Mario are co-founders. Last year, they sent 1,000 freedom chairs to people in developing countries. And in India, Ashok now uses one to get to his tailor shop and anywhere else he wants to go. As an engineer, it's just so meaningful to see something you designed impact somebody's life. And we get to do that every day, which is pretty awesome. And soon, wheelchair users in this country will get to ride like Steve Pento. In a few weeks, Tish and her team will begin shipping the first freedom chairs for U.S. customers. Stephanie Lydon, WGBH News. And Steve Pento is not the only person to take the freedom chair for a test ride in the U.S. Tish tells us one user has already pushed their chair to the top of Mount Washington. In the U.S., the freedom chair sells for just over $3,000. That's about half the price of many sports wheels chairs. And all the non-bike parts are manufactured right here in Massachusetts. Now, if you know someone who's making a difference in changing lives in our community, let us know. Nominate our next Greater Bostonian by emailing us at greaterboston at wgbh.org or tweet us at greaterboston and tell us who it should be.